Is that okay? You ready? These are the ribs. These are a, a, a select few of the ribs. These two are the first two ribs. As we move further down into the ribs, you'll notice that they begin to get bigger up until you get to about the 11th and 12th rib. You'll also notice that here, the end of the rib is more rounded than here where it's more flat. That is because from one all the way down to about 10, you'll be attaching to cartilaginous tissue, which then either directly or indirectly attaches to the sternum. Whereas the 11 and 12, since they do not attach to the sternum at all, they are floating, their ends are rounded or beveled. So this would be rib 12, or I'm sorry, rib 11. Now, there are several structures you need to be able to identify on the rib. Obviously, the head of the rib you should be able to identify. The neck of the rib you should be able to identify. The tubercle of the rib you should be able to identify. You should also be able to identify this hill-like structure right here called the angle of the rib. Now, inside of this, you'll see that there is a depression this is actually a groove. This is the coastal groove. Now, the angle of the rib tells you whether you have the rib upside down or not. In this case, because it's pointing up, I know that it is upside down. The angle of the rib should always point down. Okay? Now, this is the shaft of the rib. Right there. Okay? Alright. So again, these would be considered true ribs. This would be considered a false rib. This would be considered a false and floating rib. And again, uh, there are scientific names for them. So these would be vertebral sternal, vertebral chondral, vertebral.